Hello, welcome back to Topper Machine. I'm Josh Topper, and today's job is to make the shafts that go with those sprockets we bored last week. Now, normally I'd probably do these over on the Lion, um, but the Lion is still set up to do more sprockets. So we're working on all of them, got to finish those up, but we're getting the first batch done and out of here soon. But we got to make the idler shafts that go with them sprockets. So. I've got the material right here, it's 1045 TGNP, um, 3 and 7 sixteenths. We'll get it up in the lathe, face it off, center drill it, and then we'll start uh, machining out the shaft itself. All right, so we got her up here, got the steady rest. We'll go ahead and get this set up and then uh, we'll start facing her off. Put a little dab of anchor lube on our center drill here. Perfect. Yeah, we'll go ahead and flip her around and get the other end and we'll get it down to length. I'm going to speed it up, run it a little faster. So now I gotta pull this out to measure it. And this is gonna be fun. Because we gotta get a good accurate reading. So we're gonna use the my little um, vernier caliper, my 48 inch. Lift left the 72 upstairs. Just too heavy to horse around. And we got a ways to go. We're at 332, 6, 675. And we got to go to 3 eighths. So we got 300 thousandths to take off. So I'll go ahead and we'll take that 300 thou off. I'm going to try doing it 100 thou at a time.
ahead and center drill this end also. Alright, so I got this one all cut to length and center drilled. I'm going to go ahead and get a couple more done um, to go with the extra sprockets that I have for this first batch that I need to get out right away and back to the customer. Um, obviously I'm going to have to finish up the rest of the order at some point here, but getting the stuff that's needed immediately is priority. So I'm going to go ahead and just quickly machine up the other uh, one or two shafts and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, I got the second one done. I'm just going to loosen up the steady rest enough and see if I can't just walk it out of there without pulling it out of the chuck. Oh, yeah, just barely. Perfect. Let's get the steady rest all the way out of here if I can. That makes some more room. <laughs> There we go. All right, we'll go ahead and get our center in there. Tighten down our tailstock good. Perfect. Our first step, we're going to take off to about somewhere over here, uh, 10 inches. Yeah, 10 inches worth, half an inch down um, to a finished size of 2 and 15 sixteenths. Got our digital readout set up. We're going to crank her down 10 inches and just make our stop mark right there. We'll just touch it. And the other thing I'm going to do while I touch it, zero the digital readout just so I know on the uh, cross slide, just so I can see if there's any taper. I can kind of get an idea how we're turning. There's going to be a little bit. We'll adjust for that once I get there. Uh, I'm going to take 200 thousandths this first pass. And I'm feeding 10 thou a revolution. So 100 a side, 10 a revolution. going to go ahead and check this and just see if we do have a little taper in it or not. If we do, we'll have to adjust a little bit. Two twenty-three. Two twenty-two. I think I can live with that. That's pretty. One thou a taper, a little looser down here isn't going to hurt us one bit. Um, and the customer actually specifies these are a little bit loose, so the bearing goes on easy. So that's perfect. So let's take the next pass. We're going to do 200 again, um, the same feed rate.
it's given a nice surface finish and it's it's warm but it's not hot so that's good we're not gonna have to worry about too much about thermal expansion and again we'll check see roughly where we are and just double check for taper Twenty two. Twenty two. So no taper at all. So it actually uh, cleaned itself up that little bit we were seeing one thou here and no um, you know, say zero here and one thou here. So it cleaned up, it came out good. Now we've gotta take we'll take our last pass, we'll try to do it in one shot. I'm gonna turn it in just a little bit on the end, measure it and see how it fits, and then we'll go with that. But we had 86 thousandths to go. We're just gonna take a quick cut. And we'll measure that. And we're a little oversized. All right, so we were 8 thousandths shy. Um, you know, the difference between the tool pressure could have made up that difference. We're gonna do another cut here. That's enough to measure it. And we'll measure that again, just make sure we're right, and then we should be able to finish it. Two point nine thirty six, which is just on our high limit. Um, they want to be at two thirty five to two thirty six. So I think. By the time that cools, we'll be just under the 236, which will be perfect. Let's go ahead and finish this sucker up. Just going to take one final measurement. Not that it's going to do me any good because if I'm undersized, we're already screwed. 936. Nine thirty six. Beautiful. All right, the next thing we got to do here is three inches of a relief. We're only going to take off a little bit, just a skim cut to give a nice relief so that when they put the sprocket on they're not fighting that bit. So again I'm going to come in, touch off, give my mark. That's at three inches. And we're only going to take 20 thousandths for a relief. We don't need a lot. change out our tool here to a round insert and we're going to cut a radius right here with the round insert and then we'll just use it to chamfer the end and then this hit with a little file right here and this one will end will be done.
Perfect. This end is all done. All right, now I go ahead, flip her around. In theory, everything should be the same as far as my settings on depths and whatnot. As long as I didn't wear out an insert, we should be good. So, and we're using the back of the, or the spindle face as a depth stop, so we shouldn't have a problem there either. So on this one, I'm just going to set up the camera and you're going to go along for the ride. I'm going to go ahead and turn this whole thing out. This one's all done, two size, ready to go over to the bridge port and get the keyway milled in it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and actually machine up the other one before I get to that point. So, well, next scene will be over at the bridge port, but it'll be either this shaft or that shaft, I don't know yet. All right, so I got it over here in the vise on the bridge port. And one thing I'll point out, and I already did the math, these vise jaws are inch and three quarter inch tall and center of the shaft is 1.718. So I'm actually grabbing it just at center. Plenty plenty to hold on to. Um, the vise is all indicated true, everything. And what we're gonna use is a very nice three flute end mill. Um, we'll use this to plunge in, cut our seven ace keyway. So we'll open up the depth and then we'll do the sides. All right, so what the drawing calls for is from the relief to the relief with the edge of the keyway, um, and we just line it up, eyeball it. I'm running uh, 325 RPM. And we'll just bring it up until I touch, zero the knee, and then go in uh, the depth I need, which is 495 thousandths for the depth of the keyway. Put a little of our anchor lube in here.
Now with every product out there, there's good and bad. And the thing with the anchor lube is it's amazing for drilling. The milling, not so much because it's so thick. So what I do, and I'm working with this little cup and a brush is great, but I'm gonna put a little water in this and thin it down and that'll get it to run down the cutter a little better when we're doing these deep keyways. And so I don't know if you can see this. I did about a one-to-one -one ratio of water just to thin it out. And this is basically what I was doing when I was cool, you know, if you're running it through the cool mist on the slaughter. And this gets it right down in there. So let's get back to it. I'm going down the last to the bottom of my keyway right now, uh, 495 thousandths deep. Now I've cut this at three quarter inch. I'm gonna go ahead and widen it out. And basically I gotta take it up 125 thousandths. So I'm actually gonna take 60 on either side. So we'll start on this side. On the back side, uh, conventional milling, come around back, conventional milling the other side. Quick peek here with the caliper. We're looking good. Got a little ways to go. Um, we're gonna speed up the spindle now. Just because we've taken the brunt of the material out. Uh, a little slower, in my experience, has always paid off on the, on the heavy cuts um, as far as tool life goes. And then the, the final passes speed it up and it'll give them a smoother finish. Well, let's go ahead and we'll take, uh, we'll take three thousandths.
Another thing to take into consideration on cutting keyways like this is the rigidity of the machine. This bridge board is tired. There's no doubt about that. It is tired. Um, so I do struggle a little bit. It needs a refresh, new bearings and everything. And that day is coming. Quicker, I think, than, than uh, anything else. That day is coming. Okay, let's just get in here with the caliper and see what, roughly what we got. Boy, by the caliper, it looks like we're there. Let me go grab the gauge blocks and we'll see how gauge block fits. All right, so here are my gauge blocks, a 750 and a 124, giving me 874 thousandths. And I checked that with a caliper and, oh, they just, just fit. Just right where I wanna be. So one thou under, nice snug fit. This keyway is done. Right, well, I'll just drop the knee down and get this out of here. I'm gonna keep the knee set, everything set just the way it is because I've got more of these to make. Um, so that'll be my next job is to, I got another one to do right away. I've got um, four more to do after that. So nice, nice little job here. And we'll go ahead and move this over and grab a deburring tool. Well, there she is, all done. Ready to go back on the on the pallet with the sprockets and go back to the customer. All right, well, I'll get this protective tube on it to protect it from uh, while it's on in transit. Uh, they want that nice smooth finish for the slit, the shrink fit. So anything we can do to protect that is is money well spent. And there we go. So. The job done, out the door. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, please feel free to comment, question. Uh, I'll do best to answer them. And until next time, get out in your shop and get it done right the first time.